Good Friday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. It is just past the top of the hour, and as of right now, again, we've got some pretty quiet conditions, and most importantly, a lot drier than what we've seen over the course of the last several days. We're going to continue to see that through better part of the rest of the weekend, but unfortunately, we do have the possibility of some more showers coming back our direction as we get into around the early portion of Sunday evening. We'll talk more about that coming up up here in just a little bit. If you're just tuning in to see what's going on with the forecast, we've got a ton of information for you coming up as we go into the weekend. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. If you can't stick around for the whole forecast, catch it in the blue bar at the bottom of your screen. You can see it's scrolling on by there. And then also you can catch our seven-day forecast. That's available on the lower left-hand corner of your screen. You can also see more at this address, wreg.com slash weather. Got any questions for me? Something that wouldn't fit uh, on here or got a longer question? to ask or if you have pictures to show we'd love to have those featured on our daybreak newscast or on social media so if you have those you can email them to me right here at austin.onic at wreg.com this is our exclusive video weather blog weather overtime and if you had a chance to check us out before on here we'll give you an update as to what's going on with the weather across the mid-south and we'll be doing that throughout the rest of the morning on news channel 3 updates at 825 and 855 live at 9 starts in a little bit less than an hour and and of course, we'll have an update coming up on News Channel 3 at noon. Let's go ahead and get going. If you've got anything in the way of weather reports, we'd love to see them. Drop those into the comments section. Let us know what the temperature's like. If you've got some nice sunshine out there. Looking for reports of fog across the Mid-South. We're just not seeing that much up out there when it comes to fog for this morning. So if you have anything like that, let us know what's going on. If you got that uh, weather station for Christmas or the holidays and have that up and running, give us a wind direction, wind speed, give us some humidity, give us some temperatures out there. And again, drop those into the comments section and we'll read those off as best we can. Good morning from Bruce. Lachey, hope I'm saying that right. Lashi from around Soggy Munford. Thank you very much for checking in. And good morning to everybody else from Raleigh in Bartlett. Uh, Deborah Estabrook, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And hello and good morning to everybody else. Quick check of the forecast again, showing again the numbers rising into the mid to upper 50s to lower 60s. Decently close to normal for this time of the year. But most importantly, and the best thing that I can give to anybody out there for today, is this. Sunshine, clear skies tonight, and absolutely no rain expected. You should have seen the look on Corey's face when she found out she didn't have to do any more rain reports for this morning. She'll have an update at 825 as well, so stick around for more on that. Winter weather, a large winter storm affecting the East Coast. What's called a nor'easter is going to be causing some travel delays. Nothing showing up this morning, but into parts of New England, this is what it doesn't look like this morning. The observatory on top of Mount Washington in New Hampshire, some of the worst weather in the United States, totally covered over by ice and snow. Can't even see the observation deck out there for this morning. But this is what parts of the East Coast states from, say, D.C., Chesapeake Bay, north into New England are going to be having to deal with. Speaking of D.C., mostly cloudy, a little bit of drizzle here and there across the Chesapeake Bay, Potomac area, looking across into the monuments and back toward the Capitol building. We do have, again, the good possibility of some showers here, but most of the snow and the ice and stuff like that should be going north of D.C., upwards of Baltimore, Philly, into the tri-state area, so not much going on directly here just yet. A lot more better conditions across the Mid-South, plenty of sunshine around Rhodes College in Memphis, the view from the Weather Underground camera featured there. Another school view from Ole Miss in Oxford, Mississippi. Long shadows of early morning. Beautiful sunrise taking place this morning in Oxford and across much of northern Mississippi, including in and around Clarksdale, Mississippi at Heidelberg Elementary. School in session and getting some blue skies out there, clearing the clouds out of the area, so looking a lot nicer. Traveling this morning, traffic heavy but not seeing any major backups at I-40 and Witten Road from our transmitter tower camera. Traffic appears to be moving pretty well in all directions. Again, Corey will have an update on traffic in just a little bit. Likewise, from South Haven, view from I-55 and Goodman Road. Nice, clear view out toward Horn Lake on the horizon. And traffic, again, inbound traffic as well, doing pretty good at this time. Storm Tracker 3S, 
very nice again to tell everybody about the con clear conditions out there and very clear, clean sweep across the area when it comes to Storm Tracker 3S radar. We really have little, if anything, showing up uh, into and around the area uh, at this point in time. Uh, Portia Moore, good morning from Memphis. Thank you very much for checking on through. Top of the morning to Naya Dawson. Thank you uh, very much. Bruce Lashi, that bright light in the sky. Not a meteor, that's for certain, so good news on that one. So good to see on that. 39 degrees, sunny in Pope, Mississippi. Jeffrey Griffiths, thank you very much uh, for checking in with the weather report for this morning and to everybody else as well. No sign of any rain here. Doubtful we're really going to be seeing that much. But Sunday, again, there is that potential. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little while. This is one of the storm systems we're talking about into the weekend, what was featured very prominently on CBS this morning. Two storm systems, one off the East Coast, this one slamming into the West Coast, and this will be our next weather maker as we get into next week. It's still got to go across the Great Basin, the Rockies, and into the Mid Plain states. That's important because, again, the Rocky Mountains kind of slow these things down and once they get out into the plain states as they leave the Rockies behind they get a lot more room to maneuver they get a lot more energy and could draw in a lot more moisture out there so this over the next few days it's going to take about three days to make it from the coast back to the mid-south area but this could have a decent impact on our weather here as we close out the weekend and go into the early part of next week we'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit Cassie Lloyd yeah but we are going to be getting snow in March again. It's possible. There's no question about that. But uh, on this forecast that I've got, maybe a little cooler, but we're not seeing anything in the way of snow or ice or anything like that. About 19 days until spring. We just passed what's called meteorological spring yesterday. That's for record-keeping purposes. So technically, according to the climate data statistics, we are now officially in that spring season. But the change in seasons, the equinox doesn't happen for another about three weeks or so, but we're, we're getting there. So a little bit on the chilly side for this morning. Temperatures, the coolest numbers on weather at three from the Weatherbug Network. We again see numbers back in the lower to mid 40s. The winds occasionally kicking up to about 5-10 miles per hour. So we do have a little bit of a wind chill this morning. Not much, but at least a little bit out there. Let's run the numbers into the rest of the day. If you're going out to eat around lunchtime, good place in the sun and away from the breeze may not be a bad idea. As temperatures may be just a little bit cooler as we go into the afternoon. Now we're not seeing any green on here, which indicates rain. Likewise, we're not seeing any gray underneath that green that indicates cloud cover. What we do have is the colors of the temperatures on the map and the moving lines on screen showing the winds coming in out of the northeast very much on the dry side. So very nice conditions out there for this morning. Picking up the kids from school this afternoon, that should be our high temperatures upper 50s to around the lower 60s and getting into this evening drive time home dry comfortable pleasant very nice out there for the commute dinner time heading out for dinner and a show or just staying in tonight temperatures getting cool pretty early back in the upper 40s to lower 50s by the time I'm on with daybreak tomorrow morning with my co-anchor Nina Harrelson we'll be seeing again temperatures dropping into the lower 40s winds turning a little bit farther out of the east tomorrow morning and then we start to see again those changes coming on through so for today temperatures back in the mid to upper 50s decently close to normal lower 60s as we get into the rest of the weekend now we'll start off with sunshine on Sunday getting into more clouds by midday so about the time you're done with church or Sunday school or that late breakfast on Sunday morning it looks like things are going to start to kind of cloud over by just a little bit chances of rain not really expected until we get into about dinner time Sunday and then on Monday into Tuesday when Todd Demers is back in the studio we'll be looking for more chances of showers and thunderstorms coming back on through. So far, according to the Storm Prediction Center, we don't see anything in the way of severe weather here, but at this time of the year, we need to be ready for that. So again, something we need to, again, keep an eye on things like that. Nancy Barnett Cleveland, good morning to you, and glad to see you're paying attention to the coffee. Very good. Mary Ann Watson Gray, welcome from Hernando. Cool Sunglasses, Sharon Goolsby, thank you very much, and Riyad Goshe from Cordova. Welcome to the show, and hello back to Angela... Tony, sorry about that, two-point typeface and bifocals don't really go too well on this display here. Now, what we're looking for into next week, we'll clear out the rainfall as we go toward around Tuesday morning, and then afterwards we'll clear out, but the clearing skies will take several days to take place. It's going to be back toward next Friday before we get 
back into more sun than clouds. We also will see a little bit cooler conditions out there back in the lower to mid 50s. So again, numbers not doing too bad. A little cooler, not the Arctic blast we saw a few weeks ago. Could be pretty chilly in the morning, but not enough for any snowfall out there. Temperatures back in the mid to upper 30s for the most part. Next best chance of rain after Monday and Tuesday will be next Sunday. And so far, it is looking like a pretty decent chance for right now. But again, keep in mind, this is 10 days out. So it's a good possibility this will be changing into the next several days one way or another. So this, again, is a reason why you need to pay attention to the forecast every single day along the line so we can update you on this. So please keep that in mind. Keep it tuned again to the weather experts, weather overtime on air, online throughout the rest of the weekend. And we'll keep you advised about that. Want to let everybody know about this from Memphis Office of Emergency Management. The OEM is going to be testing tornado sirens this morning at 930 in the metro area and across a good portion of Shelby County. Why are they doing that? Because this is Tennessee's Severe Weather Awareness Week. This is your opportunity to learn everything you can about severe weather before it happens. If you were in school and they did tornado drills on those nice sunny days out there and you heard people joking around about the fact that, well, why should we be practicing this when it's nice and sunny out there? There's a reason why you need to do stuff like that ahead of time. My high school back in Topeka, Kansas, got hit by a tornado two years after I graduated. So, again, something that is very important to remember to get practiced up now. So today is going to be the day to sound the sirens as a test. And if they're not working in your area, this is a good time to pay attention and help out around the community. If the tornado siren near your area that usually goes off does not do so, you can report that back to Memphis OEM, and they will help to get that thing fixed to make certain people are aware of what goes on. Why do we still have sirens because we can let everybody know when they're out and about. Again, if you're thinking, well, we have cell phones, we have tweets, we have uh, you know computers that'll let us know just about every point in time all the way around the area of society. But if you're outdoors, this is a good way to let people know what may be occurring. So this is a good opportunity to learn more. Also, it was supposed to happen earlier this week. It didn't because they don't want to sound the sirens on a day when it's cloudy or raining because they don't want to increase the uncertainty of what may be coming in a particular direction at a particular time. So on a nice sunny day, everybody will recognize this as being just that, a test. So if you hear the sirens at about 9.30 this morning, a little less than 90 minutes away, that's the reason why, again, Severe Weather Awareness Week. Take the opportunity to both make certain your siren is working near your location, if you have one, and also to make certain you learn as much as you can about severe weather. Now, if you'd like to know more about where the Skywarn training sessions are going on so you can become a Skywarn spotter, head to this website and scroll down beneath the forecast, and you can get more information uh, into and around the area to make certain that that happens at this point in time. Let's see. Timmy, show me Ayangbasan. God must not like working on weekends because he has been causing rains on or close to the weekends. Well, we've been getting some pretty good soakings in between Saturday and Sunday as well in many locations out there. So we'll have, again, a possibility of that coming up on Sunday night anyway, but not for the rest of the area. If you would like to tune in, tune in to Bob and Josh. Sports chat started just a few minutes ago on AM 730. Bob and Josh on the program called Talk Back Live. They cover a great amount of sports chat on there. <clears throat> Excuse me, but they also cover a lot of community events and things like that. If you can't catch AM 730 because you're outside of the Memphis metro area, dial them up online, talkbacklivenetwork.org, and you can catch my complete weather expert forecast there. And you can get my forecast throughout the rest of the weekend if you're out and about and away from a signal for your computer on your phone or watching TV, uh, again, taking a break and out and about. Check out the forecast information on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3 throughout the course of the rest of the weekend. And if you've got weather pictures, we'd love to see them, but I can't show them if you don't send them. So if you could send them in, that would be great, and then I could feature them on things like weather overtime. All you have to do is tweet them to me at aonic underscore WRAG3. If you look at the bottom of your screen on the red bar, you can see the tweet address passing by right there, aonic underscore 
WREG3, and would love to have you along for the ride. That'll do us again for the latest edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. We've got an update coming up at 825, another one at 855, and live at 9. Got plenty of weather there coming up at 9 o'clock this morning, so definitely want to tune in for more on that throughout the rest of the day today and at News Channel 3 at noon. Questions, again, let me know at austin.onic at wreg.com, and I'll be doing another weather overtime later this morning on my Facebook page, so please feel free to join me at about 10.30 this morning as we update you for the forecast going into the rest of the weekend. And we'll take a look at whether where the troops are. Uh, if you have friends or loved ones in the United States military, we'll take a look at some various outposts around the world so you can kind of get connected from the home front and see what's going on out there. So definitely want to see uh, more about that. Bobby J. Collins Davis from Whitehaven, thank you very much. Lars Carson, dry inside. Glad to hear that. Glad to see that uh, the roof is indeed working. So thank you very much for passing that along. More updates throughout the rest of the day on News Channel 3. And don't forget about on air and online throughout the rest of the weekend. So stay tuned for more there. And we'll keep you updated as we head throughout the rest of Friday and into the first weekend of March 2018. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik from the WREG TV News Channel 3 Severe Weather Studios. Stick around for a lot more throughout the rest of the morning on air and online from News Channel 3.